Yeah, but it's not like crazy far, I guess. Got Basically, it. if you're watching Emily in Paris and oh, gosh. and Gabrielle's moving to Normandy and they're like, oh my gosh, that's so far. It's, it's not. not. Hello and welcome to the Worldwide Honeymoon Travel Podcast, the podcast that talks about all things couples travel, including destinations, tips, advice, and more. I'm Chris. I'm Kat. And this is episode number 257. I saw something really interesting today. Okay. Um, I was just, it, it was like, you know when you're just like kind of like relaxing and zoning out and you're just like scrolling, like just like surfing, surfing the web as we used to say back in the day? <laughs> okay. Do people the still say? The world wide web. Do, do people still say surfing? surfing the internet surfing the web or is it now like scrolling on social media it's probably scrolling because like if you're gonna surf like you're not what are you doing when you're surfing the web like how do you like find things like you just go to google and you find what you're looking for maybe i'm doing it wrong well what 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 happens when you surf the web so like normally i will well i guess reddit is kind of like social media Nah, not really though like i will go to the front page of reddit and i'll see something that looks interesting and i'll click on it And then... And then you go down a rabbit hole. And then I go down a rabbit hole that way, but, like, I'll go to, like, that article, and then that article has links to other things and all this kind of stuff. So here here was the thing that I saw interesting, or that was interesting. Okay. There was a video of um, a single male lion, okay? okay? And there was some, like, debate as to whether it was an older lion or whether it was an adolescent lion. To me an untrained eye, it looked like an adolescent male lion. Okay. Okay. And it was one, we'll say adolescent male lion, and there were there was a, a pack of 20 hyenas. Did you have to properly identify them for like a, an, an, a, a mental acuity test sort of situation? <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> but I do know animals. <laughs> Put animals in front of me, I will get those right. <laughs> Um, but anyway, so these these hyenas are, um, they're feeling like pretty cocky. Like they feel good about their chances, right? Mm-hmm. So 20 on one, okay? And you can tell that they're like nipping at this lion and they're like, there were, there were multiple times where a hyena would get um, like some of the skin of the lion like in their mouth and like, kind of like, you know, like how a dog is playing like with a toy and like I'll shake its head a little bit. Yeah. So there was some of that. Um, There was definitely like um, some instances where the lion would um, roar and like essentially pounce on one of the hyenas and kind of like assert dominance. But um, you could tell that this lion was just trying to like hold off these 20 hyenas. Mm -hmm. Fast forward like maybe a minute. Okay. Like all of these hyenas are starting to feel like pretty good. Um and are they trying to hunt the lion? They're they're sensing that because of their numbers and mm-hmm. the fact that there's only one male lion that they can take this, right? Like that this is going to be a kill for them. Oh my gosh. 20 on 1 though, right? Yeah. Um so this is this is what was wild to me. There is another male lion that enters the the area. Okay? And he sees this happening and he starts like very like not he doesn't run over he just starts like casually walking over okay like imagine kind of like a quick trot mm-hmm. the speed at which the hyenas retreated was like instantaneous instantaneous and they were like we can't handle two fully grown well lions. so he, here's the <laughs> this was like this was the wild part is what sports reference is this supposed to gonna be like there's no I just, I mean, sh- lebron in the finals <laughs> um <laughs> here's because didn't they do that with like the the, the jackals who was the guy who was narrating christopher it? walken oh my gosh yeah but no here's here was the surfing the web part okay this is a long story now um, i know i was like where are you going with this <laughs> this was the interesting part is that someone like someone had linked to the story or linked to where like the, the, um, the video was shot or what have you. And there is a, I don't know if it's a universally accepted ratio or what, but they're like, yeah, generally it's like an eight to one, um, ratio of hyenas to lions where they feel pretty confident. 
um, I mean, this would be a 10 to one, right? 20 to two. And they're not going to necessarily, um, like as soon as another male lion enters the fray and they know they can't all surround this one, they're going to back off very quickly. And I like, to me, I was like, that is wild that like two male lions are going to ward off like 20 hyenas. I don't know. That was that was the thing that was very interesting to me. I watched it's this, your Roman Empire. <laughs> I watched it is. I watched this video like four separate times. Cuz I was I like I was just very interested in it. Okay. So I was surfing. I was catching waves. Um, doing something. Doing something. But yeah, that was my <laughs> that that's my interesting tidbit from what I saw today. Um were you surfing at all today? Um, just like TikTok for a bit, but then I like to also like check my stats, like from the blog and stuff, and my emails and stuff when I get up in the morning. So, okay, I don't know. and so I was working and cuddling with Professor. There you go. Yeah, that's a solid. Our day. cat. For those of you who are just turning in, I could just see someone like being like, "Who is Professor?" <laughs> Chris is okay with this. Yeah, our cat. Um, he sleeps between us at night, which is really adorable because in his little cat bed on our bed, um. He really enjoys that being right between us on his little cat bed in the middle of our bed. And um, he gets up. He got up with you this morning, but like he came back to bed eventually and was like making biscuits and like Aww. hanging out. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, do you have a highlight from this past week? Um, I will say that um, my the choir Christmas party is always a lot of fun. Um, that was last night. We have our very belated um choir christmas party from our church um all the people that are in the worship team which includes myself um and then um our partners we which includes myself which includes yourself uh we got to have our christmas party finally and it was a lot of fun it's always good to just catch up and everybody always brings such delicious food it is a nice i mean the host of the party made such a fantastic charcuterie board like a little meat and cheeses there was pears on it there was like there was like an everything but the bagel seasoned goat cheese and i was like you have outdone yourself i (laughs) i picked up what i thought was a um was a red rind gouda Mm -hmm. it was an apple (laughs) and i like i had it on a cracker and (laughs) i'm getting ready to (laughs) pop this this gouda and cracker in my mouth and it was a, um, it was a very good apple. <laughs> On a salty cracker? I bet it's a little sweet and salty. It was a shocking texture within my <laughs> mouth and a shocking temperature. I was like, ooh, that's a cold cheese. And I, then I was burnt like, that my is tongue. A juicy cheese. Because, again, the hostess, she made these like little brie jelly tart, little like, mini little like tart things. Puffs. Puffs. Pastry yes. puffs, yeah. Yeah, yeah, little brie puffs. And she had just gotten them out of the oven. And I ate one and it wasn't super, like, it was like very hot. Like it kind of burnt my tongue a little bit, but I was like, it's worth it. It's like eating pizza rolls. And I go to get the second one and I just fully committed to the biting the whole thing at once. And it was so hot. It burnt the roof of my mouth and I had to turn around. Otherwise I knew I was going to make a face at everybody at like, and try to, you know, cool my mouth down a little bit while finishing this brief up. <laughs> it was worth it though. It was, it was very good. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but it was yeah, solid. It was a lot of fun. At the end of the night, I... Christopher thought he could just like make weird noises at a bunch of deer across the road. I did. And they paused. Like yeah, we had, they were like, I think, genuinely concerned for you. I We had direct <laughs> eye contact. I love doing animal calls. And... What animal were you call Or like, what animal were you trying to be? I was trying to attract an owl. Okay. That's a really good owl. And at first, when I walked up to the deer, I was doing a, um, like a guttural grunt. I was like, (gasps) 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 like trying to like do like a, you know what I'm saying? No, I don't know what you're saying. (laughs) That's a deer noise. (laughs) Is it? Well, I don't know. They responded and I was like, I don't know what I'm saying. They're probably more than anything like, should, are we running from this guy? Is he trying to hunt us? My worry. Is he okay? Does he need saving? Like these deer were just like, we don't know what to do. (laughs) <laughs> they were they were like in a trance looking at me. Um, they did not break eye contact with me. And then I was like, oh, I don't want to be like accidentally attracting these things. Like, I don't know with what I'm saying. With that guttural grunting the, noise? <gasps> um, so I decided not to do that. And I decided to do the owl hoot instead. But yeah. Um, moving on. Moving on. Um, that was how my night ended, which was great. 
Um, Lovely. I don't have anything else. Uh, anything else to chat about? Do you want to? Yeah, let's talk. Do you want to say what we're talking about today? Today we are going to continue a little bit more about my time in Normandy. I believe I have an episode. We already have episodes on a full road trip to Normandy, the D-Day beaches, which was such an epic tour, um, and then Mont Saint Michel. And so today I'm going to talk about another really cool thing that you can do in Normandy that I don't think a lot of people think of. And I think, again, my whole like reason I wanted to go to Normandy was to be like, okay, yes, of course there's Mont St. Michel. There is the D-Day beaches. And I think a lot of people tend to go for those reasons, but there's more to Normandy than just that. There's lots of, I mean, the beautiful architecture, cute little villages, the beach towns, um, places like Etretat uh, with the cliffs, like the limestone cliffs. Um, and also the Normandy cider route. Um, yeah, because the Normandy cider route or the Route du Cidre, um, it is located in the Pays d'Auge, um, which kind of sits along the departments of Calvados and Orne. Um, yeah, and it's just comprised of some smaller towns, including Cambremer, um, Beauvan en Auge, Bombosc, um, and just a few more places that have lots of cider farms and Calvados distilleries around. And um, yeah, I mean, I think the reason why, you know, you think of France, you mostly picture, oh, if, or I guess drinks made in France, most people are going to automatically assume, oh, wine, you know, right. wine right. is produced in most regions in France. You can find a wine region in there, whether it's Provence, um, Champagne, the Alsace, like Bordeaux. Um, even the Loire Valley and stuff. It's just, yeah, but in Normandy, it is not quite as, it, because of the climate there, it's very similar to the weather in the UK, if you can imagine. So it's it can be pretty gloomy and rainy. It was kind of weird and bizarre when we were there because it was in the 90s Fahrenheit and oh, wow. sunny and hot most of the time. Um, and it was like in September, but that is not the norm. Most of the time it is kind of overcast, especially in the winter, the fall, that sort of thing. Um, so, you know, it's not very conducive to growing grapes before mm -hmm. that reason. Um, so, but what does thrive there, much like it thrives in the UK, are apples, which is why they were like, you know what? We can't make grapes. We can't make a fermented beverage with grapes. Let's do something with apples instead. And can you just like paint a picture for us here? So, um, if people are flying into Paris or I'm sorry, flying into France, they're probably flying into Paris if they're coming from yes. outside the country. Where is Normandy with respect to Paris? Normandy is like Northeast or no, sorry, not Northeast, <laughs> Northwest. Northwest. Okay. Northwest. And about how, um, how far with respect to like how long it would take for public transportation or um. driving. I was going to say, route you did. It, it'd probably be like maybe a couple hours on the train. It just depends. Normandy is a pretty big region. So it's like, yeah. depends on where you're going. I mean, you can get to Giverny outside of Paris, which is like right in like crossing over into Normandy. Mm -hmm. You can be there in like, what, an hour or so? It's not a stone's throw though from Paris. This isn't like a 30 minute ride and you're there sort of thing. No, not to like most places in Normandy. Got it. No, okay. No. Okay. Um, so Northwest of Paris, a considerable ways away. Yeah, but it's not, like, crazy far, I guess. Got Basically, it. if you're watching Emily in Paris and, oh, gosh. and Gabrielle's moving to Normandy and they're like, oh, my gosh, that's so far. It's, it's not. not. Okay. You can, take, okay. you can take a train and it's, like, maybe an hour and a half train ride. Okay. It really wouldn't have been that bad of a commitment. We were longer distance than that when we, li when we were yeah. dating. Okay. <laughs> um, Anyway, so yeah, not too far. Normandy isn't, but it's kind of considered like the countryside of, I mean, outside of Paris. If people are like, oh, I'm going to the countryside, it's more like Normandy is like that area. But anyway, yeah, they are the most charming little apple orchards everywhere. And they're like little, some of these cider places have like dairy cattle or beef cattle that just hang out in those orchards. So they're Aww. just they're chilling. So it's a very, very picturesque, you know, setting um, to be around all the apple farms and stuff. So, it, and the towns are very cute. They've got the, you know, some of the medieval architecture and, you know, I mean, some of these towns, like, I don't know, there's like things that have been around since the 1200s and, and things like that. So it's it's very charming and it's very pretty. Um, but 
The cider route in particular is comprised of about 20 plus farms that are designated as the Cru de Camembert producers. And they have, um, they actually can make a specific cider called the AOP, which is their like protected origin, you know, their appellation designation. Yes, yes, yep. yes, yes. Yep. Um, Pays Doge ciders. So those are going to be the best quality. Now they can make other things aside from that, but um, they're the ones on the cider route typically also make this. Okay. Um, yeah. So, and like I said before, the cooler climate, better for apples. That's why you have some great cider there and great apple products. Um, which leads me into my next thing. What gets made on the apple cider route, or sorry, in the Normandy cider route, uh, cider, obviously, um, there's the Cidre AOP Pays Doge, like the big famous one. Um, and the cider here has alcohol in it. So it's not like here in the United States, you can get like apple cider, at like a farmer's market or something and it doesn't have any alcohol in it it's mm -hmm. just like sparkling apple juice pretty much um this is about four to five percent for um the cedra aop pays doge cider um the cedra four two five four two five yeah, not okay. 45 not 45 percent <laughs> <laughs> yeah that would be intense that'd be a cider that would be a cider um there's cedra brute um, which is going to be a drier cider, um, also about 4 to 5% in alcohol. And then there is the Cidre Du, which is going to be a sweeter cider, but it also has less alcohol. So um, about 2 2.5%. It's a very light. Like if you're, if you're biking around, you want like a little cider. I don't know. Not at the same time as you're biking, but if you're having a picnic, I don't know. It's that sort of thing. You want okay. something light and you yeah. don't want it heavy. And you, you know, you don't want to buzz, but you do want to have some cider. You know, like a, a little bit of that is... I guess, more preferable and okay. it's sweeter. Um, and then there's also Poire, which is the pear cider. So they make okay. cider out of pears as well. So this was something really interesting to me. Um, this was not a, a trip that I joined you for. No, my sister came. Yes. Um, and when I was thinking about this, I was like, I was thinking about cider and I started to think about like, what is cider? Mm -hmm. Right? And when, at least when we get hard cider here where is it often um shelved um it, with the beer with the beer yeah. right and so this was something that i was i was thinking about and um we have um we have reference books for both beer and wine mm -hmm. um like the oxford guides to to beer and the oxford guide to wine and i looked up cider in the oxford guide to beer mm -hmm. guess what it said nothing yeah and i was like okay well like it had to have been an oversight right but then like you start to think about it and like you said it's made from fermented apples mm -hmm. and i was like okay so i look in the oxford guide to wine and it's it's considered a fruit wine yeah i could see that yeah i mean it's even um what's unique too about the cider is it is stored in like 750 ml bottles yes so it's stored in a wine type bottle right in france anyway i know in the uk you can get them in like you know cans and bottles and things like that or you can get them like in a six pack here yeah right and, and i think also like when i was in the uk whenever we got cider like you could get it from the tap so mm. I guess it was kind of served alongside beer. It was very much like a you could get it from a tap. And I don't know. In Paris, I didn't really see that. Or it's not in Paris. In Normandy, I didn't really see that too much. Because, again, I think they produce it in the bottles. So it's coming in the bottle. So like maybe it's just, I don't know. That is interesting, though. So I guess maybe the UK and the US are similar with their ciders being, like, kind of almost seen or associated more as, like, alongside beer, maybe? Right. It yeah. was just, yeah, it was, it was something that... Um, like I, I had to take a step back to think about it for a second. But like you said, the other thing that they mentioned was that um, the only other fruit that can be fermented into what is a typical cider is pears. Mm -hmm. um, and then they also had um, something where they were talking about the origins of cider. And they said that before it made it to Europe, it likely originated and was developed somewhere in the Middle East or Asia brought over to Europe on a trade route, and then that's how it it became um, more prominent in Europe, which I also thought was really interesting. Yeah. Yeah. Just, yes. yeah, neat beverage. A little neat beverage facts. Um, yeah, but other than cider, uh, you can do more with apples than just uh, eat them and make cider out of them. Um, there's Calvados, 
which is um, they also have a Calvados Pays Doge AOP, so another protected designated origin. Um, it is an apple brandy um, that is made by distilling cider and then fermenting it into an eau de vie. Um, and then it is aged in oak. Um, and in, to order to be the AOP, it has to be double distilled. So, um, yeah, so it's essentially an alcoholic beverage. It's mostly an after dinner drink. Okay. Yeah, so kind of served with dessert or something. When we were in Deauville, we ordered like a um, cafe gourmand where you can get like the coffee and all the little mini desserts. And it came with a little Calvados to have okay. on the side. Yeah, and these are actually, um, Calvados can taste very different and be very different colors based upon how long it's been aged, which makes sense. The longer it's in the oak, the darker it's going to be. Mm-hmm. So something that's only like a year or two is almost clear and it's going to be a lot stronger tasting versus um, something that was aged 20, 30 years. It's going to be a lot darker, but it's going to be a little bit richer, a little bit sweeter. Okay. So um, so it was really fun getting to try the different Calvadoses because that's something that you can try on the cider route as well, not just cider. How long can Calvados be aged? Um, we went to one place that I'll mention later um, that I think they had up to 30 years. Oh, my Most gosh. Most of the time, it's like... Uh, I don't know. Usually it's like th- three, four years is like when I think at the beginning. And I okay. think the one that I ended up buying was like an eight year. Okay. Yeah. Cool. So, um, and I know that there's like a specific number of years or something that has to be aged for a bit. Um, and then, <laughs> and another thing that is produced is pomo, which is essentially mixed with, it's just Calvados and apple juice mixed together. Also kind of an after dinner drink that you can have. Okay. It's just, it kind of cuts the intensity, I suppose, of the... Of the Calvados. Of the Calvados, because it's a lot sweeter since you've got just apple juice going in. Yes. Um, Speaking of other apple products, there's apple juice, pear juice, and apple cider vinegar you can purchase as well. Oh, okay. And, yeah. And also some of the places, because they're farms, um, some of them even have local honey and cheese that awesome. you can purchase as well. So... Those are some of the products that you can purchase and taste or try while you are on the Normandy cider route. Okay. Yeah. Um, Do you want me to talk about some of the logistics? Please. Okay. So all the fun stuff. So when to visit, getting there, hotels, that sort of thing. Um, Getting there, the easiest thing is driving. You're, I mean... These are some small towns. You certainly could take a train into Deauville or Cannes or Cannes, sorry, and uh, from there rent a car but you from all of the research that I was doing because I tried to find if there were any guided tours that you could take of the area there's not a lot of guided tours really um there are some like food and drink tours of Normandy where it might stop on like one place on the cider route but not just like I don't know it's it's not not like a driver in wine country or something. yeah it's not like where in Bordeaux you can book a full day trip to wineries or something uh, yeah okay. they didn't really have that available so you're gonna need to drive it which means drink responsibility drink response drink responsibility drink responsibility um drink responsibly um again they have a mix of things you can try between apple juice or like the cedar dew which is like very very low alcohol mm-hmm Obviously, be you can be a DD as well. Like I don't know, you just yeah. drive, drink responsibly, drive responsibly, buy That's, some for later, that sort of thing. Yeah, you can buy yep. some for later, that yep. sort of thing. Um, when to visit? Um, June through mid September is probably a good time for better weather and places being open because some places are closed or have very different lower hours and things like that during the winter because it's just not really a time to go cider tasting I suppose and also just the weather is not the best in Normandy in the we- in winter weather because it's pretty rainy and cold okay yeah and chilly um, I would think that would be good cider weather yeah but it's I've that'd be good Calvados weather I feel like, it's like well nice yeah toasty, there you, go. you know there what you I mean go, yeah but yeah but cider is actually really good like a crisp cold cider on like a warm day feels nice yeah but also most people are going to be tasting it during the summer and autumn sure you know those sort of months so um as far as where to stay um you can stay in con which is i think it's about an hour or so away it is uh there's a hotel called close saint martin and then the hotel la fontaine con centre or centre um So there's some hotels that you can stay there. Um, You could also stay about an hour and a half, or not an hour and a half away, like 
30 minutes away or so in Deauville because it's not too far from the cider route, which is where we stayed um, at Villa Aguival Boutique and Spa, which was wonderful because we basically based ourselves a few days in Deauville and did the cider route one day and then also just explored Deauville the other day and stuff and had a, a beach day, which was wonderful. And then um, lastly, you can also stay in the countryside, which on our way back from um, Mont St. Michel, we ended up staying in the countryside and it was only about 30 minutes away from all the cider farms as well. And it was called Chateau de Ieville. And it was just a lovely little chateau in the middle of the countryside. And I absolutely loved it. Um, yeah, it was just a cute little place. They had a pool. They had a garden. They had donkeys. Or they had a donkey and a goat, which were so cute. It was just a lovely little I castle love, hotel. I, I love the video love that you sent with um, with the donkey. Yeah. Well, I panicked when I was there because I, I, the donkey and the goat got very excited when they saw me coming, even though I didn't have food and I felt bad. But the donkey let me pet her and her name is Kekowetz, which means peanut in French, Aww. which I think is adorable. <laughs> that is really cute. And then the goat got really excited and had these little horns and he kind of got his head stuck out of the gate and his horns were above it. So he couldn't get back in. So I'm panicking being like, oh my gosh, like this is my fault. Like he got all excited to see me. He like didn't know what to do with himself. So here I am trying to like get his horns and like stick them back through the fence but he's moving because he's like what are you doing to me and I'm just like oh my gosh this poor thing is stuck and finally he made it through and he was fine but I told the owners later on because we were he was like oh my gosh she does that all the time like oh. <laughs> so I was like I was like was good it wasn't just my fault and now I, I forgot his name I'm sorry you forgot the goat's name yeah I did forget the goat's name but the donkey's name was peanut yeah okay I just thought peanut was well and she also like was honking in the middle of the night one night and it woke us up because we had like one of the windows cracked because there was an air conditioning in there. So, which again, isn't a big problem when you're in Normandy, Normandy normally, but when it's 90 something degrees outside, it's, you kind of have to sleep with the windows open and stuff. But we, yeah, I heard the donkey going off in the middle of the night, but it was going off, going off. She was, Aww. and then she like quieted down and went back to sleep, I guess. But interesting. Anyway, um, cute little, boutique hotel situation if you want to stay in a chateau in the countryside of Normandy that sounds really charming it was really charming and it was a bed and breakfast so they also had breakfast which was delightful okay. anyway so um I actually recommend probably Deauville or in the countryside where you'll be a little bit closer to the cider farms it's a lot of fun and I think Con might also be between 30 to 45 minutes away okay so I guess you could stay there too but if you want something a little bit maybe a little bit closer and like Deauville has the beaches and then like the countryside's just charming. So yeah, you can do that too. So those are the logistics. Okay. And we really wanted to see and do a lot on the cider route. So I have a full day for you guys um, that you can certainly take. Um, and I also have a full itinerary on francevoyager.com, which I will put in the little note for this podcast too, when you can see the description of it. But starting off, we left from Deauville. Uh, because that's where we were staying and it was just pretty convenient. After breakfast, we headed off to the cider route and stop. Yeah. Really quick. Yeah. Um, what time are we talking about here? I want to say a lot of these places open at like 10. So okay. probably like 9, 930. I don't know. It wasn't an early morning. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, yes. And so stop number one was Desvoye Cider in Calvados. Um, and it is a, it's just the most charming little tasting room. It's in a, it's in like a barn and there's little farming equipment in the barn and you go to the tasting room and they have all their ciders and everything on display. Um, it is a third generation family owned farm. Uh, again, like the full, the old farming equipment was really cute. Um, there are 20 varieties of apples, uh, that they grow for their cider. Wow. All of which, uh, fall under the AOP designation for the Pays Doge cider. Okay. Um, and that is what they make. We tasted a lot of ciders there, Calvados and Palmo. Uh, my favorite was the Cidre AOP Pays Doge. So they're the protected one, the Palmo de Normandie. And then I also really enjoyed their uh, Cidre Brut. So their drier cider. Oh, okay. Yeah, so those are some really good ones to try when you're there. And this is a very small little place. Again, family owned and operated. Uh, very, very charming. So that was stop number one. So what does a cider tasting look like? Because it's 
if it's a fruit wine, Mm -hmm. is it more akin to like a wine tasting or is it more akin to like, do you get a flight like you would get a flight of beer or you know what I mean? That's a really good question. Um, We get it's it's more like a wine tasting because you go in. You ask for like a degustation, which is a tasting. Okay. And uh, they just kind of line up the different ones. So for the most part, they have a set tasting where they'll kind of go through their different types of ciders. And then you maybe get a Calvados and a Palmo as well to taste. Okay. Um, and do they talk about like, are there their tasting notes and that sort of thing? Or... Um they will. They'll kind of discuss, uh, like, is it if it's sweeter or drier, um, kind of the alcohol composition, the apples, all of that sort of thing. Okay. And then cool. also, if you have any questions, they can answer that as well. That's awesome. So, okay. Yes. Um, and then stop number two. You ready for the next one? Okay. Stop number two uh, is a really cool place. This is a little bit bigger of a place. This is the Calvados Pierre Huet. Um, this one dates back to the 1800s and it's a fifth generation, um, endeavor that's going on. It's quite large, actually. I think in 2010 or recently in the last millennia, they have, uh, they built a, a big tasting room, which was great. So it's much more, um, famous and well-known than the, the Desvoy Cider and Calvados and and a lot of the other ones. This is just a pretty well-established place. Um, but they have 25 different apples, they're famous for their Calvados, which is why it's called Calvados Pierre Uet, um, which are aged between two and three years, all the way up to 30 plus years. Oh, so this is the one you were talking yes. about. Okay. And I really liked their Brut as well as their AOP ciders, but it was really, really cool to get to check out uh, a lot of their Calvados because that's what they're known for. So you could do little tastings of that. And they give you like, it's like a sip. It's not like okay. you're, a gl- <laughs> that's why it is, it's, that's good. Cause yeah. you, you take like a little sip. You can also ask to like spit it out or something too, if you need to. But so yeah. one thing on these, and I know that we're just on stop two, but um, if there's no option for like a group to mm-hmm. pull up is, is it's more of an intimate setting then like you don't mm-hmm. have a, a big van or bus or something with like 10 or 15 people coming in at once. Um, that's like part of a big group tour, you know, like how you can sometimes get that in like wine country. Yeah. No, we did not experience that at all. Okay. It's mostly people just coming in. That's really neat. For a tasting. Cool. Because they, again, I don't think this is like a huge thing that lots and lots of people are doing all the time. Other than maybe some locals and, and French people that know about it. Okay. Um, yeah. So, but also I would like to note here that this place does do tours. A lot of these cider places do tours. Now, Again, as the tours, uh, it's not a lot of American tourists or people that speak English coming here. Most of them are offered in French. But this one does have tours in English from April through September, so kind of more during their season, um, on Mondays and Tuesdays at 2.30 p.m. And it's like €3.50. Like, it's really cheap. Um, The only time that they're not offering tours those days is if it's already booked up by, like, a French group if they want to come in for a tour. So I guess there are people Uh. that will book groups of mostly French people because I've never seen like a huge group of Americans going on a tour okay. of the cider route. Nice. Maybe that's changing. I don't know. Stop number three for a little break here. Um, next to the Calvados Pierre Huet is the Les Jardins uh, du Pays d'Auge. So it's a beautiful garden area and it has four hectares of land. There's like little gardens everywhere, small ponds, flowers, half timbered. There's a half timbered farmhouse that's really a charming that you can go into and check out some of the old farming equipment and go upstairs. Um, and then there's also donkeys there as well. It's very cute, but it's nine euros to enter. It's definitely worth it. It's a great little spot to stop and take flower or not take flowers, take photos and just enjoy the little fountains and the the scenery and all the all the cute little farm stuff and the cute taf- half timbered houses and things. Nice. It's a very adorable little farm. It kind of takes you back to like the old farming days, I guess, of Normandy, which is it's very charming. Okay. Yeah. And then stop number four, you got to get some lunch. And a place that you can get lunch is in Cambremere, which is one of the main cities or the towns um, on the cider route at Au Petit Normand. And this place is fantastic. We ate here twice during our trip, uh, once while on the cider route and then another time for dinner when we were staying in the countryside. And that's how we found out that the cider route was really close to where we were staying in the countryside. Um, it's very good. It's a family ram place. It's adorable. 
it's it's very busy as well. So if you can get a reservation, maybe try to do that, especially if you're coming in the summertime or things like that. Um, it's got traditional Norman cuisine. So you can see things with like steak with camembert sauce because camembert is a local cheese. Andouillette with, you know, with fries and things like that, which that's more of a, the andouillette is like a sausage, but it's kind of like the, I don't know if I should tell you because I ordered it for dinner. It's a one, sausage. It's a sausage. Okay. I ordered it for dinner one night and it was, and I got it and I was like, oh, okay. It's not like a traditional like sausage thing. It's, it's other parts, I guess, all kind of thrown in. But in a sausage casing? In a though? sausage casing because okay. I started eating it and I was like, you know what? It's pretty good. I'm just going to eat it and I'll look it up later. And I'm glad I did that. But it was really good. So if you want to try something traditional that's Norman, the endulette is is good. Okay. Um, we also, for lunch this day, had the breaded livero cheese, which is a local cheese. Mm. Um, so it was fried and then it was served with a little salad and crispy potatoes. It was okay. very, very good. And it's all melty when you cut into it. Oh, so good. Um, they also have like apple tarts, obviously. <laughs> Apples everywhere. Um uh, yeah, so it's just a very good, cute little, quaint place. I think the grandmother or the mother's the one cooking Aww. in the back. And it's just a very sweet place. And yeah, just reserving it in advance uh, in case it gets a little busy. Now, are there options for um, like cheese or, or that sort of thing at the different um, uh, stops? Like, you know how sometimes there'll be like little like nuts or um, like cheeses, like as your wine tasting is, mm -hmm. are there similar offerings? Um, not that I saw on mine. Like you, you okay. kind of go up for tasting and they don't really, they don't ask you like, Oh, would you like to pair that with cheese or chocolate or something like that? You Got it. I mean? Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so yeah, after a nice little lunch, cause I will tell you that the cider farms do close between like 12 and two. So you've got plenty of time to go get lunch if you want to and browse the gardens if you'd like to do that as well. So, you know, during the time where, the places close up for lunchtime because uh, that is very like in France they will close most businesses between 12 and 2 so people can go get lunch okay yeah so that is the same here um, stop number five is G-A-E-C du Marois du Grenduet sorry if I'm butchering these I'm trying my best um, this is the cutest place it was another little cider farm half-tempered farmhouse it's in the pretty countryside and there's they even have an antique apple press that was like as decoration next to an apple tree like near the front of it which was oh, really cute okay. and then they also had like a little pond it's just an adorable little place um, another third, it is another third generation farm. There are 20 varieties of apples here and there are also 90 dairy cattle cows in their orchards. Oh my gosh. So that's really cute. Um, and the milk that is produced at this farm from their dairy cows um, gets sent to a dairy, a local dairy, where it is made into Pont Levesque and Livero cheeses. Hmm. So that's pretty cool. And I really enjoyed their cider AOP, their Pays Doge, uh, and the Pomo and the Calvados here as well. So they, we got to try all of that. Do the cheeses have like an apple flavor? No, but they pair really, really well with it. Okay. You know yes. how some cheeses have like a grassy, like it yeah. can kind of like shine through as to what the, the cow or the goat or the sheep or what have you is eating. Yeah. Uh, that's why I was curious. Yeah, I didn't get that flavoring, but I did... It, but again, yeah, it tastes, it's, it, they're fattier cheeses. They're all kind of these, um, the four main cheeses of Normandy that most people probably hear about is Pont l'Evêque, Livoro, Camembert, and Neuchâtel. And they're all bloomy rind cheeses. Mm, okay. So kind of like Brie and Camembert, like mm -hmm. they all kind of have that consistency where it's kind of gooey in the middle and then you have the, the moldy bit okay. outside. And they're just, because they're such kind of creamy, fatty cheeses, they're really good with the acidity of cider okay so they do taste really really good with that well it well with that um stop number six is just kind of to check out the cute little town of bombusk so it's another little town on the cider route it's just fun to wander through and, and or drive through and just kind of check it out it's just an adorable little town to see um and then stop seven is fair de laval au tenure and this is all one day yes okay remember take your time with it you yeah you don't need to go you don't even need to do all of these it's just we only had one day to see it and this is what we did nice um 
so again, if you only want to do two or three cider farms and go back to Deauville or the countryside, you can do that as well. There's no one making you do that anything. Um, we just wanted to see as much as we wanted to. So that's why we did it. So stop seven is Ferme de la Val d'Otenia. Um, we kind of happened upon this one. This was not a place that we were like, oh, yeah, on our itinerary that we had planned. Um, we were on our way to our last big stop for the cider route. And we happened upon it and we had extra time. So we were like, oh, let's do like a quick tasting and see if we want to buy any cider. Um, got some cider samples. They had several apple products, including apple cider vinegar was really big. We saw people coming in and purchasing that from them because um, their little tasting room also had just like a bunch of stuff on display and things like that, um, like their different ciders. Um, again, their AOP was really good. They made a really good semi-dry cider and then their brut. Like, I'm not a big Cidre Dew person, but we, I did have, like, I tried it, but it was just very sweet. Are all of these carbonated? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Um, and then stop number eight. And this one is not traditionally on the route to Cidre, but it is a famous distillery for Calvados. And if you do go, if you're looking into going Calvados tasting or anything in Normandy, you're probably going to hear about it. But it's Chateau de Brio. Brio. Um... Yeah, it's a very famous distillery. They make rum, they make vodka, they make all sorts of things. But we actually booked their tour ahead of time because they offer tours in English. Um, you can book it online and just make sure that you designate that you want an English tour. And we did a late tour in like four in the afternoon, I think. And we got to learn how Calvados was made. Um, and they have a very beautiful video projection on a bunch of barrels in one of their... Um, like storage facilities, the projection shows how it goes from tree all the way to getting plucked as apples to the distillation process. And it was a very, really well done light projection that you could see about how Calvados was made. And then we also got to see like the distills and all that. And then you end with a Calvados tasting at the end. So very lovely. Got to taste a little bit of Calvados there. They had all kinds of Calvados um, ranging from different years and yeah. Are, are the differences in these how long they're aged? Yes. Okay. It's just how long they're aged. Okay. So there's not... Um... Well, if it's the Calvados, like the... Yeah. Yeah. I mean, because you can do Calvados and then the AOP has to be double distilled. Okay. But then the Calvados that is just any old Calvados doesn't necessarily need to be double distilled. Okay. Yeah. But if you want that protected origin yeah. labeling, it has to be double distilled. Okay. Yeah. Other than that... The only difference is really the aging process. Is Interesting. How long they've been aged. Yeah. Okay. And then stop number nine, which is an optional stop, but we wanted to do this anyway. It has nothing to do with cider anymore, but you're heading back to Deauville and stopping in the town of Pont Levesque, which if you were listening early in the podcast is a famous cheese. So we went to a fun little cheese shop to try all four of the main cheeses of Normandy, the Pont Levesque, Livoreau, Neuchâtel, and Camembert. And we went to a place called Fromagerie La Degusterie. So it's a cheese tasting place. Um, yeah, we got to try all the cheeses. We ended up buying some to take back uh, to our hotel with us later on with our cider. And it was it was very delicious. I, I liked um, Pont Levesque is probably my favorite cheese of all of them. But I think Camembert you're probably the most familiar with. It shapes and look it's shaped and looks a lot like Brie. Um, I want to say that Livero and Pont Levesque are more square shaped. And then Neufchatel is the heart shaped cheese. And it's really cute. So yeah, fun little Valentine's Day thing, I suppose. You can have your little heart shaped cheese. Instead of chocolate, you give them a cheese. Uh, but yeah, Pont Levesque, it was great to stop and try some cheese and then take it back and enjoy it. That was our dinner that night as we went to a grocery store and we got a baguette and some little accoutrement for like a cheese board and basically had some fruits and cheeses on baguette. That's a solid dinner. And we um, paired it with the cider that we had that we purchased that day. That yeah. sounds like a really nice evening. It was it was lovely it at our hotel because we were staying at the Villa de Laguval and they have this beautiful courtyard area that you can sit and hmm. either have breakfast there in the morning, which we did, or you can have a drink and eat eat out there. Nice. It's really nice. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that is how to spend a day on the cider route or the Rue de Cidre in Normandy. And just a couple tips. Mm-hmm. Like I said before, you need a car, which means no, tip number two, drink responsibility. Um, tip number three, it does help to know some French. Um, 
Calvados, Pierre Ouet, and Chateau de Brio had people speak English. They have tours in English, so it's a lot easier. But some of these really, really small cider farms, like the Desvoyer Cider in Calvados, they did not speak English. And I was getting by with my French there. Which not at all. Th- at least they weren't, they didn't speak English to me. And I, I, I only communicated in French. Okay. So maybe they were just that impressed by your French. They're I like, don't there's think no so. way she knows I English. I don't think so. Most of the time when people <laughs> hear my French, they'll go to English, I feel like. Oh. But I'm like, no, I'm trying to practice. Um, but yeah, so even just knowing a little bit helps. I would say that if you want to go to these places, you can say like uh parlez vous anglais to see if they speak English first. But um also saying things like je pourrais avoir une dégustation une dégustation s'il vous plaît which means could i have a tasting please okay so je pourrais avoir une dégusta- dégustation say it once more <laughs> that one's tripping me up je pourrais avoir une dégustation s'il vous plaît okay okay so could i have a tasting please and then um, if you want to buy something so je voudrais Acheter ça, s'il vous plaît. And you just, when you say ça, you point at what you'd like. That we, that ça just means that. Mm-hmm. Like, I would like that. I would like to buy that, please. That's literally, je voudrais acheter ça, s'il vous plaît, is I would like to buy that, please. Okay. Um, number four, this is a French tip in general. Always say bonjour, or bonsoir, depending on the time of day. Um, it's just considered rude if you walk into a shop, a boulangerie, anything like that. If you don't say hello, it's seen as very rude. So just when you go into these places, say bonjour. That's During thing. morning, day, and then bonsoir in the bonsoir. evening. Yeah, and it's kind of a debate on when to say bonsoir. I either do it at 5 p.m. or like if the sun is going down. If the sun's down, it's it's bonsoir. Like okay. You, it's, you're done. <laughs> you're done. <laughs> at least for me. Um, tip number five, most of the tastings are free or super cheap. Maybe like a few euro for a tasting. Oh. Um, and then bottles of cider are also very cheap. Three, four euro. Wow. Maybe eight euro at the max for a 750 ml. But they're extremely affordable. So you can definitely do the cider route on a budget. You just need your car. Um, it's a very affordable thing to do. Now, on the other hand, Calvados is, can be a bit more pricey because it is more of a distilled liquor, mm-hmm. like that sort of thing. So um, the, obviously, the older it's aged, the more expensive it's going to be. I want to say there were some that were like, 200 euros or something at oh Chateau de Brio that were like the 30 plus aged years. And then the one that I bought was maybe like 15, 20 euro or something for okay. a half bottle of, I don't know, of like an eight year age. Um, Yeah. And like I said before, the bottling, bottles are usually about the size of a wine bottle. So 750 ml. Okay. And yeah, the best place I would recommend going to or yes, my favorite? I was going to ask what your favorite one was, oh, what your okay, favorite good. stop was. Um, I really liked Calvados Pierre Uit, uh, just because I thought they had really, really good ciders. It's next to the gardens. Was that your second stop? That was our second stop. The yeah. big one. The big one. Okay. And it is, it was, they they know what they're doing. It's very good. All of the places had really good cider, um, especially when it's got the AOP designation. It's going to be a really good quality cider and those farms know what they're doing. But it was really enjoyable to go there. They had like a little setup of a still or a still. Um, yeah, it was just a really a cute place next to the gardens. Um, the lady was very informative, uh, which was just fantastic. And she knew tons and tons about Calvados. So it was really neat. And we asked nicely and she let us try an older Calvados, which was great. Um, so it was just a really, really cool place. Um, I also really like Chateau de Brio just because it's really beautiful. It's like a, a farm area i don't know it's just gorgeous the whole estate area it's like an estate um yeah okay all great um is this something that you would recommend for like a couple's trip or a honeymoon or something like that was it is it a um does it have like a romantic allure to it or is it more um you're going there for the product itself no i mean i think that the main reason to go, yeah, it is to try the ciders and the Calvados and things, but most of the time it's, it's a tasting to see if you want to purchase the products too, or, and it's fun to right. taste. Mm-hmm. So, 
but honestly, like, you know how- the whole experience of going in the countryside and seeing these charming little towns, mm-hmm. as well as these beautiful countryside, f- like the farms. The farmlands are cute. Um, the little tasting rooms are usually in in like old buildings, farmhouses, and things like that. So. It's just incredibly charming. So, yeah, very romantic if you wanted okay. to go for a couple's trip or a honeymoon. If you want to go to Normandy um, and you want to see Mont St. Michel together, I would highly recommend um, making some time to do the cider route because it's just, again, you can stop in a couple places, but I would recommend lunch at Au Petit Normand was really, really good. And it's just, yeah, it's just charming. It's it's so charming and cute. And it is a great way to get out of Paris Yeah, because it's crazy to me that Paris is only like, what, if maybe two, three hours away. It's not super, super far away. And mm-hmm. by train, if you're in Deauville, even shorter than that. So it's just crazy. You can go from the hustle and bustle of the big city to Normandy, which isn't terribly far, relatively, and get to enjoy just cute little apple orchards where there's, you know, cattle underneath of it just hanging out. And um, I don't know. It's just a beautiful place to be with the farmland everywhere and nice all the cute old-fashioned farming equipment and adorable half-tempered houses it's just a very adorable place to go on top of tasting cheese in the area tasting cider and calvados and things like that beautiful yeah all right all of that being said would you go back would you go again i would i really enjoyed the countryside of normandy in general and i would love to to check out more of either the cider route or even just like the little towns again to see the cute towns. Were there stops that you did not, um, like stops along the cider route that you guys did not um, get to experience or would it be that you are returning to the same spots? Uh, I would probably go back to uh, Pierre Uitz, Calvados Pierre Uitz. Um, But I, yeah, I mean, there was tons. There's 20 plus farms with the AOP designation. So we obviously didn't see them all. Right. I, because I'm a blogger and have to write about it, you know, I went to a bunch of them. So if you want to, you can see all of these in a day. Like I said, that's what we did. But if you want to just make a half day trip and go in the morning, get lunch and come back, or Mm -hmm. you want to go get lunch and at Au Petit Normand and then go to a place or two, you can. It's very relaxed. We did not make reservations for anything other than the tour that we took at Chateau du Bouillot. Okay. Yeah. Great. Yeah. I'm looking forward to going. Yeah. It's very cute. You'll love it. That wraps up how to visit the Cider Route or the Route de Cidre in Normandy. And I will link all of, I will link the article that I wrote about it from France Voyager in the notes uh, for this episode, if you go to the description, you can click on that and go and read the full article with all the details of how to do this. But yeah, let us know your thoughts. Would you guys do the cider route? Have you been on it before? Let us know. You can always reach us on Instagram and Facebook at Worldwide Honeymoon, X at WW Honeymoon, or email cat at WorldwideHoneymoon.com. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. Thanks, guys. Thanks for tuning in. And don't forget to rate and review our podcast. It takes less than a few minutes and really helps other people find us. Also, if you're enjoying this awesome free information on both the blog and podcast, when you're booking your next trip, head over to WorldwideHoneymoon.com slash resources and use the links provided. We earn a small commission at no cost to you when you book through these links. And these are all brands and companies we know, love, and use, like Skyscanner for finding the best flight prices, World Nomads for the best travel insurance, TripAdvisor for hotel bookings and reviews, and even Amazon for all of your travel purchases. Thank you for tuning in. We really appreciate it. Wherever you are, wherever you go, remember to make every day a worldwide honeymoon.